at this exact moment, you might be gripped with fear, saying, Oh my god, Thor, that is the red and blue Kachina, the Hopi Indians predicted we would see in the sky before total doom. I'm like, no, chill out. That's just NASA, pumping color in the sky to study particles. Yeah, this Thor's weird. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I am putting a new audio edition to this video. Because when I recorded the audio you're going to hear in the second half, I recorded it like a week ago. And guess what? This colorful cloud wallops sounding rocket launch has been delayed ten times. <laughs> Which shows that we are definitely not ready to fight aliens. If aliens invade us, we would need pure crystal clear skies to send our rockets and spaceships up to fight the aliens. So we're definitely not ready to be invaded, you know? Anyway, blame Tropical Storm Cindy this time. Okay, that's the one thing we are good at. It's blaming people, things. NASA announced Friday that the launch of the NASA Terrier improved Malmute. Now, it's weird they put two dog names in, in the sounding rocket. The sounding rocket, scheduled for Saturday, June 24th, has been postponed due to expected cloudiness in the region. Wow, that's the first time I've ever heard NASA talk about weather before it happened. Usually, they wait for a storm to hit, and then they come out with all these fancy pictures and data and graphs talking about how bad it was. And I'm like, dude, why don't you guys do weather reports before the storm? That would actually help you. Okay, a new launch date has not been determined. It's the latest delay in a long-delayed mission. Wallops Flight Facility on Tuesday scrubbed its ninth attempt to launch the rocket Tuesday because it was too cloudy. The agency has been trying to launch the rocket since May 31st with zero success. As over three weeks, reasons for canceling the launch have included high winds, thunderstorms, cloud cover, and boats in the hazard area. And we're definitely not ready to be invaded, people. The goal is to test a new deployment method for the clouds. The red and blue green clouds are expected to be visible from the New York to Carolina, as far west as Charlottesville, Virginia. So you better be looking for them, Zoe, when this rocket does go up. And then you can take video and let me know and send it to me. Studying the clouds' interactions will help support studies of the ionosphere and aurora, officials say. All right, so now you'll listen to the second half of audio I recorded like a week ago. Enjoy. Oh, well, wow. We got this. Don't panic. Deal with it. Wait. <laughs> you start to see pictures, ain't you? Stay cool. There were other people. Why should you be the only one involved? But I am involved. We are all involved. I need your love. This is a Thor News presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for a weird story? Well, I hope you are. Because the story is weird. We're over at NASA talking about sounding rockets and colorful clouds. Yeah, the weather's been weird. In advance, I'll tell you, my Thor News theory, my Thor News theory is the sun is pregnant and the sun baby is making her shine. And so together, they are radiating a lot of color into the sky. Now, some people say chemtrails. I'm sure that adds to it a bit, but chemtrailing for a reason. And to me, that reason is radiation management. So let's read the article. And I guess it was originally slated to launch on the 11th but they keep having to postpone it. I'm guessing they were just waiting for me to cover it. Well, here you go. June 11th, nighttime rocket launch to create colorful clouds in space. Now, that is just weird off the top, wouldn't you say? It makes it sound like NASA's launching rockets to make the clouds more colorful, which would be, I don't know, I guess nice. Kind of romantic, but still weird. Update, 3.30 p.m., June 19th. Artificial cloud rocket, <laughs> or ACR, has been moved to June 20th. Again, the launch of the NASA tertiary, terriary, terriary, improved male mute sounding rocket scheduled for Monday, June 19th has been postponed to June 20th because of the weather. Oh, the weather's bad? I hadn't heard. Uh, just kidding. I've been obsessing about it. Did you know that? All right, so the launch has been rescheduled for Tuesday, June 20th. With the launch window between 9.06 and 9.21 is not expected to be con Conducive for launch. Oh, I read that. The NASA Visitor Center at Wallops will open at 8 p.m. on launch day. Where is this place? There's going to be a live stream. The multi-canister Ampule ejection system being tested on this mission will allow scientists to gather information over a much larger area than previously able during a sounding rocket mission to study the ionosphere or aurora. I've always wondered, why don't they put a satellite above our atmosphere so we can watch the auroras from top down? You know, in like the Lagrange point, five point. Auroras are cool, man. 
and they have been going wild due to the coronal mass ejections and the solar wind. So yeah, NASA announced it's Peter Parker, Joe German mission to get to the sun in 14 months. And then they're putting this up to study auroras in the ionosphere. It's almost like something crazy is going on with the sun, wouldn't you say? Canisters will deploy during the rocket's ascent, and they will release blue-green and red vapor to form artificial clouds between 4 and 5.5 minutes after launch. And you know, you guys make it excited. I'm getting excited, because like anytime NASA talks about any colors other than Martian orange or Martian red, I think that's exciting. I like the color blue, but I recognize blue and red make purple, and yellow and blue make green. Yellow's cool, too. All the colors are cool, man. These clouds are vapor tracers that allow scientists on the ground and by aircraft to visually track particle motions in space. The clouds may be visible along the mid-Atlantic coastline from New York to North Carolina. I'm going to guess they're not going to be able to launch it tomorrow, but I don't know. Maybe the storm system will move off the coast. Who knows? This is talking about where they scrubbed it. So the vapor tracers may be visible from New York to North Carolina and westward to Charlottesville, Virginia. The total flight time for the mission is expected to be about eight minutes. The payload will land in the Atlantic Ocean about 90 miles from Wallops Island and will not be recovered. Oh, Hey, smartphone users can download the What's Up at Wallops app. It contains more information. All right, so I'll stay on top of this weird story, you know, and we will find out what is happening with our magnetosphere, our ion in our ionosphere, and uh, let the conspiracy theories roll, I guess. All right, everybody, stay cool, be cool, and we'll talk about this more. Peace out. Stay cool, be cool, and the force be with you always. Live long and prosper.